Monday, November 21st, 2022. Today on the Daily Review, we discuss a movie directed by Robert De Niro. There's only a few, or maybe only two. That's right. It's The Good Shepherd today on the Daily Review with your host, me, Joe Maraca. How's it going, everybody? Okay, I saw this movie in the theater with my mom. And I think we were both a little bit bored because it's nearly three hours long and there's not a lot of action. Not that I think it should have action, but it's just not, not, not a lot of things happen. It's a lot of talking and stuff. And I think I was a, not, I'm more aware of the history now um, than I was then. Anyway, it, it, it's basically about the early years and creation of the CIA starting like during the story starts during like a little bit before World War II and goes through like to the Bay of Pigs and and, and to the end or to the Cold War and the space race and stuff like that Uh, which all sounds incredibly fascinating because it's all told from one person's journey through that it's almost like it's like boring Forrest Gump except uh, (laughs) And there's tons of good performances in it. And it stars Matt Damon and Angelina Jolie and William Hurt and John Turturro and Billy Crudup and Joe Pesci and Timothy Hutton and Lee Pace and Rob De Niro and Kier Kier DeLay and uh, Eddie Redmayne in his first role, Michael Gambon and Alec Baldwin and Tammy Blanchard and Oleg Stefan. Who else? I don't know. Yeah, it's got a whole bunch of people. Eric Roth wrote it. So, yeah, it's um, it's problematic because it's very, very intelligently made, but it's kind of um, paced poorly. And, and, and I don't – the reason I'm hesitating here is that it's got like a really c- complex narrative structure, and it's a little bit – vague at times and that's probably intentional you know that makes sense like a story should usually be told in the manner of its content you know form gives meaning or defines meaning or whatever that statement is you know like uh, they should match so if a movie were about somebody trying to go really fast you know maybe that, that like the pacing of that movie should be fast. Oh, they're trying to build the fastest rocket ever or something like that, you know, or at least a lot of sequences would be, like, quickly paced. You get what I'm saying? And if you're making a movie about someone who, like, slowly makes cheese and and, and plays chess, like maybe the pace of that movie would be a little bit slower. Um, um, and this, it should be kind of dark and murky. So in some ways it's, it's like brilliant, you know, and it, and it holds to like all the filmmaking standards that I like, but I just think that it's, it's just not, it's just more of a a novel or something, (laughs) you know, it's more, you need, you need like a 10,000 page book. I feel like to cover all this. And although they do a lot of great visual things and a handful of amazing shots and transitions from like newsreel type footage and then it'll kind of, the next shot will look like newsreel footage but then the camera movement will be like not possible from that time period and then it'll like go behind a thing and then transition to like cinema and you go, damn, that was smart. And there's a scene where someone gets thrown out of a plane that's like literally heart stopping. and you can tell that there's just like, it's just, you know, it's just very literary and everything makes sense. De Niro's very smart and a smart, or, or in everything about it is very um, angry. He's so angry at the government, you know. He has like, because a lot of this like, def- definitely comes out of, like there's metaphors going on about, you know, predicting the use of misinformation as a reaction to the Freedom of Information Act and the War on Terror, 9-11, and all that stuff. Because this came out in 2006, so it's right right there. Even though he had been developing it for like 10 years, you can tell that he's just going like, see? (laughs) See? Yes, exactly. Now's the time to make it. Um, Matt Damon's character is interesting, and there's kind of there's a bit of a sexual ambiguity at some parts that I thought was like really interesting. I think Matt Damon plays that really well. Because uh, he's done that a couple times before, and um, yeah, 
but I think that they could. And he has a weird kind of like love of women who have, are hearing impaired, which is kind of interesting and probably has metaphoric meanings that I don't fully understand. But ultimately, yeah, the core of all government is corrupt and there is a game being played on a level that is above the politicians, really. It's above everybody. And uh, it's kind of messed up. And power obviously leads to corruption through greed. And, yeah. and some, it's, I think the, the biggest problem with it, though, other than its length, is that sometimes the dialogue is too direct and too on the nose, um, which is counter to the movie, as, like assuming you're a smart viewer. Because the way they're telling the story, you're like, well, this is people who are not paying attention are just going to shut this off. So then you got to give us credit. You don't, you could, like, that we're, we're going to get the metaphor and stuff. You don't have to have a character practically look at the camera. Like, there's an L- LSD scene. There's another scene. Like, most of De Niro's scenes, he basically, he plays kind of like this old OSS guy or something. Um, OOS? What? Huh? Um, yeah, I don't know. There's probably all sorts of metaphors, too, that I didn't pick up on because I'm not that smart. Anyway, you guys can like and subscribe. If you like to subscribe, I'm here every day. You can be here as much as you want. And what I learned is that if Francis Ford Coppola took a look at the script way back and said, hey, uh, these characters aren't very relatable and, and there, there's like very little like emotional tension in this movie, you should listen to him and go... Oh, he made the Godfather. Take it easy. Have a good Monday. Bye.